Welcome to Electronline. Oh, now let's under take a RCL system or un, un <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this again. All right. Welcome to Electronline. Now let's take a closer look at the damped frequency of an underdamped RCL circuit without a source. Now here before us we have a graph that we, we would see if we had a non-damped system. If all we had was an inductor and a capacitor, you could see that this would be the frequency uh, or the representation of the current as a function of time. Matter of fact, it might be better if I even write that on the graph right here, and this is then time. And notice that the frequency or the period from one peak to another would simply be 2 pi divided by the natural frequency of that circuit. But what happens when there's a dampener, in other words, a resistor in the circuit? But still to the point where the R over 2L quantity squared is smaller than 1 over LC, in other words, that the damping factor is smaller than the natural frequency of the circuit. In that case, the circuit is underdamped. Even though the magnitude of the oscillations will diminish over time, you still have an oscillation, but the frequency will be shorter or the frequency should be will be smaller and therefore the period will be longer. Notice instead of the period being 2 pi over the natural frequency, it's 2 pi divided by the, the frequency, in this case the damped natural frequency. And since the damped natural frequency is a smaller quantity, the period will be greater. Notice we have repeated the general solution of, the, of case number 3 where we have an underdamped system. And notice that we have in the exponent the complex number j. And then we showed you on the last video how we can then rewrite this in terms of a sum of a cosine and a sine function of omega sub d t. Now omega sub d is what we call the damped. There should be a d there. My spelling is not so good today. There we go. Damped natural frequency. And notice it's defined as the square root of the natural frequency squared minus the damping factor squared. And since this, of course, is always greater than zero when there's a resistor, then you can see that this will be a smaller quantity than this. If there's no damping factor, if there's no resistor, then the damped natural frequency equals the natural frequency, of course, then there's no damping at all. So you can see the relationship. Notice again that omega is not as defined as 1 over the square root of LC, and that the damped factor is equal to the resistance divided by twice times the inductor. And again, the bigger the, the bigger the damp factor, the smaller omega sub d, and the greater the period of each of the oscillations. And so that at least gives you a feel of how things are changing in an underdamped system versus a non-damped system. And that is how it's done.